welcome to the show. My guest today is Greg Robinson. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Patty. And yourself? Yeah, good. Good to see you. Greg has a civil engineering background and he's been in leadership roles ever since 1986, some 34 years in property operations, infrastructure services and higher education industry. And I had the pleasure of knowing Greg since 2014 and I count myself lucky to have been working together with him and his team ever since. Greg inspires me as an absolute skilled negotiator and influencer, and he's a true empathetic people leader who always wants the best for the people he works with. Definitely not someone to mess with. Greg is a high profile leader in a high pressure role, leading the development of some of Sydney's most important institutions and landmark buildings, facilitating our next generation of students and leaders. So I'm keen to talk to you, Greg, and welcome to the show again. So my first question to you, what have been your challenges um, that you came across and, and what opportunities do you see? Um, yeah, look, let's talk about, I guess, the presence. Um, the way in which we work and the way we use space has now been thrown totally in the air um, from previous uh, paradigms that we had. Um, and I guess uh, that things are up for grabs in terms of the way that we might sculpt property and um, the way that we effectively go about our operations. So when you look at the university um, and almost every organisation that I've worked for, um, they've been driven by growth as their mantra. So they've chased growth as a way of being able to um, grow the organisation, but also to survive in the organisation. Yeah. And so as a builder of space, I'm a bit conflicted because uh, I'm uh, reliant on supply of uh, new projects uh, as our lifeblood. Um, but as we sort of come across the notion of how we pivot as people start to learn to work from home, um, mm. it's important that places like the university who've been pouring every cent that they earn into building capacity for more growth can actually start to reorientate its capital plan and be quite creative in terms of building new infrastructure that it always wants to, which will allow it to focus more on uh, its research capacity. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's great to, to shift the notion of space I like that. And what helps you to increase your thinking power and your focus? Uh, bananas. They're meant <laughs> to be very good for the brain, but no, look, seriously, uh, it's actually prayer. Um, I'm a, a, a Christian leader and uh, I draw heavily on my faith to guide me in everything that I do. Um, on my desk, as an example, I have two simple triggers to help to remind me to pray. One of them is a little red Ferrari that has on the bonnet of it, let God drive. Yeah. Um, and next to it is a card with uh, his will, his way, his work. And yeah. what I do is I meditate on the problems at hand and uh, I end up with answers I'm looking for and then feel incredibly empowered to execute um, what I've come up with uh, through prayer. It might surprise you, I was not always a Christian leader, having sort of refound my faith in 2004 after a, a career hiccup, which mm. I guess most of us um, have a career hiccup at some point in time. Yeah. And uh, a close friend of mine, Peter Harris, uh, introduced me to a network of really amazing Christian leaders who mentored me in how to be effective um, in my workplace. Mm. Um, and the workplace for me was full of contradiction in terms of ethics and faith. And um, what they guided me to be is a light uh, that could guide my team to do good business. Um, some of those people who influenced me were people like Roger Corbett from Woolworths and, and Richard Grillman. Uh, and I have to say, at the moment, I am so impressed with our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, mm. and the way that he's guiding the country at a time of uh, real adversity. Um, and I think it is a, is a time for Christian leaders to actually do that, to stand up and to guide um, the way that in which uh, organisations lead themselves out of this darkness. Yeah, it's, it's so great to hear, uh, Greg, because so many leaders think that they have to have the answers all by themselves, right? And it's so good to get inspiration from outside of your mind. And whether that is from faith or talking to others, um, inspiration is, is everywhere around us. And, and uh, in terms of reinventing yourself, what's your take on that in this time? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Um, accepting the need to firstly search out tough feedback, I think is important when you start to think about reinventing, especially from those that you don't naturally gravitate to yeah. or have a close working relationship with. Um, but are significant voices in terms of their ability to influence the environments in which you're trying to operate. So in some senses, I guess, it's a case of know thy enemy. 
Um, you need to do this, in my view, uh, so that you don't just reinvent for the sake of it, but take the time to look in the mirror and see how you really are reflecting in what you're doing and saying. And I learned this through doing my MBA and a number of other things in my career, mm. how important reflection was. And doing things um, that you do in your coaching world uh, of doing 360-degree feedback so that you're actually seeking out people you wouldn't normally seek out for feedback. The other thing for me, I think, is the degree of change needed and the pace uh, is very important in terms of the considerations of how radical you need to be in terms of the change. Mm. Um, when I had my hiccup in 2004, I left the comfort of uh, the corporate and government sectors and went into a business on my own. Um, and I ran that business until I joined the university in, in 2012. Um, for me, that time was the time when I was probably the boldest, the bravest, and sometimes the most fearless. Uh, and I was incredibly energised. Um, but like a lot of people in the development arena, when the, uh, when the GFC uh, came along, it took a toll on my clients. And uh, mm. I had to work with administrators and banks to help to try and recover as much as I could for the owners. And... Um, I found that environment to be very negative and I found myself um, really looking to try and exit from that and to go into something which was, again, more reliable with a good salary and a really good purpose. The organisations I've always worked for, Claudia, have had genuine purposes, whether they be Sydney Airport or the Sydney Harbour Foreshore Authority or now the University of Sydney. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely important. And uh, what you said earlier, getting feedback and, and reflect on what is working well, what you can do better. I like your thoughts uh, on that and, uh, you know, sustainability and, and good enough is well enough is, is also uh, important. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And, and what do you see as risk that you would be willing to take? I'm going to say sensible ones, um, but only after evaluation and testing with sponsors and champions to kind of improve the odds of success mm. in taking up those. Um, I guess radical ideas uh, have always been my forte and um, uh, dealing with the politics uh, that come with brave ideas and knowing that um, if you're a poor salesperson, um, that that can be your enemy in terms of where you, you're trying to head to with your ideas. So I tend to spend a lot of time now in honing my pitch uh, and ensuring that even the conservatives um, that I have to deal with to, to get ideas up, um, yeah. that I've covered off the angles which would uh, prevent them from supporting um, and, and in effect testing my ideas in, a, in an airing um, environment. Yeah, and I, I think it's so important that you mentioned that having bold ideas is great, uh, but it needs thinking through for them to land well eh, and to get buy-in for other people to understand. So well done on taking people on your journey for your ideas. It's, it's absolutely uh, great. And um, when you think about uh, going forward and, and uh, your vision of going forward, what would, will you be doing differently or, or maybe keep doing the same? Yeah, I guess the reality is um, I'll be doing probably more of the same because that's been what has led me to be successful today. And I guess in a quote from the Aussie movie classic, The Castle, I resonate with the concept of being an ideas man. Um, so creativity has been a gift um, that I've been given and, and I need to push myself now more than ever yeah. uh, as the world's been shaken up and the environment for invention is, is really there, it's right. Um, so the challenge for me and I think for a lot of people now is now's the time to invent and, uh, and that's what I'll be doing. That's fantastic. Keep those ideas coming and I hope that people find a lot of encouragement um, in, in your um, saying of, uh, you know, having bold ideas and, and thinking them through. Thanks so much for sharing your wisdom. It was great to have you on the show. Thanks everyone. Thanks for listening in. Keep shifting and I'll see you next time on the Shiftability Show. Bye.